No, don't turn that way. Why are you turning that way? He wants to turn the other way so the trailer comes this way. I don't know what he's doing. All right, maybe he's just trying to get out of here. Well, with no lights, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and head to Walmart, get some stuff, get a new floor mat, and uh, get some food. <laughs> here we go. Thanks a lot, 2006 Dodge Ram. Man, this truck is, I remember this truck. I love driving it. Home Depot, though, we need to get some more stain for the deck and the dock. And then uh, Walmart's right next door. When the power's out, you just make your own lights. My goodness, those are bright. Okay. Let's wait for it to come back home. Don't forget about the innovative tailgate light. <laughs> oh, man, that thing's bright. T-Dub got pulled over in Arizona one time because she left it on driving home. Okay, come on, light. Come back home, but right now, We'll enjoy those stars. Let's go down to the dock and put some lights out. Well, the lights might be off at the house, but I put new LED lights on the dock. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful night, though. All the stars came out. Okay, let's see if that power comes back on. If not, I'm sleeping in a truck. I don't know. I have a decision to make, guys. Turned off the lights back here, but look what is rising for us. Our own light. Beautiful moon coming over the horizon. That thing is bright. Ah, but no lights yet. It's about 10 o'clock at night now, so I don't know. We have the stars, we have the moon. It sure is pretty out here, but my, I'm definitely going to sleep in a truck. It's warm inside the house, but uh, no power still. That windstorm must have knocked out some mines. Okay, letting this truck warm up. Got our own lights for the front. <laughs> and we'll see what we're doing in the next half an hour. Well then, was going to stay the night here, but um, might as well go through traffic now if we can't we don't have any power here. <laughs> so I could have just slept in a truck here, but I, I would rather have slept in a bed there. I wanted to work on the Screaming Chicken a little bit more. But I cannot open that garage without power. So it makes me think about the generator. I know like there's like diesel surplus generators from the military, like four or $5,000. Cause there's someone's generator. You can hear it going over to the left. If I shut the truck off, it's real quiet out here, but um, someone's got a diesel generator over there to the left. I think it's the guy with the, with the awesome house and a beautiful uh, shop and uh, beautiful horses. I heard his name is Danny. I have not met him yet. I put new lights down there at the dock. Oh, I just showed you guys that, Never mind. Uh, they look pretty cool because the other ones lasted almost two years, but they uh, definitely had seen their day. <laughs> a couple of them were, were gonzo, but yeah, it's pretty cool to have some LEDs out there to light up the pathway. Gets me excited about the lake. We're going to get out of here. Oh yeah, that guy's generator, just hearing it go over here, makes me realize like, just a little bit of prepping, you know? Yeah, you know. From here, we're about 70 miles out. Um, get there about 11:30 if we just stayed on track we're gonna stop here and refresh and check over the truck but rolling through Atlanta later in the afternoon and the night is way better any of you guys that know it's Atlanta's just not very good traffic guys so stop at exit 37 there's a QT right off the exit and then it'll let you right back on that with the street light so not a bad stop let's go ahead and get it and uh, see what's going on yeah, I wish you could have stayed at the lake. It would have been nice. I'm sure it would have been fine. I probably wouldn't have been too cold or nothing, but um, I really wanted to open that garage and mess the screaming chicken, try to reprogram the computer to have drive-by cable. But yeah, that wasn't happening. Because I read up a little bit, watched some more videos on kind of resetting, you got to recalibrate, to say what kind of injectors you have, say what kind of size wheel you have, all that stuff. But we did that before, so I just wrote all that down. But um, yeah, not happening. <laughs> Wasn't in the car, so I was just sitting there kind of waiting with those LED lights at the dock and uh, yeah, I was waiting for the power to come back on, but it never did. So <laughs> Pray prayers that they do get it to come back on sooner than later because as I was leaving the, the lake property, 
probably about half mile off the road, they had power. So it's just a little isolated area. Main lawn probably fell down uh, somewhere right around there. But that moon's out to keep you keep you lit up at night. Man, I haven't stopped here for a while. There's a place back behind this called Beckett, I think, something like that. It has like um, air fresheners and uh, what's it called? The disinfectant sprays and stuff like that. It's right back here behind this QT. Takes a little bit to load there sometimes. I've been uh, been sitting there for a while. But one time I had a brake chamber on this trailer we're pulling right now actually lock up when I was pulling out of the door there and I had to cage it and uh, crimp it off and go replace that. So that's, that's in the video way back when I was had the Volvo, I think. But this trailer's brake chamber uh, locked up. Busy, busy like usual. Turn the headlights off, don't blind anybody. All these trucks to the left right here, that's not actual parking. They just kind of make that parking. Um, they enter double stack too. They're, uh, oh man, they're busy here. There's trucks everywhere. Did they leave a gap at least to get to fuel? Nope. So there's trucks even over here. Usually these like five trucks right here in front of us in that flatbed, usually they leave that open so you can get to the fuel islands. But uh, they're parking everywhere over here. So this is exactly, this is, uh, I guess where all the trucks are for the world. Man, it's busy. So you have to come all the way through here, weave through, and then come hard left and go into the fuel island. All right, all right, I get it. Let's make it happen. Okay, let's miss that truck and let's try to make it so we can make this turn and get our trailer straight. My goodness, oh, this pump's closed, but we don't need fuel anyway, so we're good. There's a Burger King over there, man. Trailer should come right through. Here we go. Woo! Okay, well, let's refresh here. Refreshed, and oh yes, this is the only time to come through Atlanta. <laughs> when the sun is down for a couple hours. Oh man, way better, so. Glad we did this. Maybe it was a sign for the lights to go out at the uh, lake house so we can get through Atlanta. Atlanta airport to our right, there's a tower. We're gonna go underneath the runways. I think, I have no idea how many runways they have, but it's probably four or more. <laughs> Uh, it's the busiest airport in the world, I think, or top three. I don't know if it has the, it goes back and forth uh, between Atlanta and, and a couple other. I don't know which ones are though, but let me know in the comments if you do know. But I know Atlanta is like the busiest airport in the world. It's Delta Airlines. Uh, this is their hub. Uh, so there's a lot of people that work for Delta Airlines around the Atlanta area. But yeah, there's those lights right there lining up the planes for one of the runways. Over here, and we go underneath. Uh, I think two of them. Oh, yeah, we're about to exit going on 85 on exit 61. Shut it down for the night, get some sleep. Uh, because we don't we don't deliver till 11, so we'll probably try to check in at 9, see what happens. All righty, and here we are underneath the airport. Yeah, got some big old fans in the corners up there, those big cylinders, like jet motors. Fans pushing some air. Big old tunnel. All right, we're out. And there's our exit, 85. This is a hard turn also during traffic, so if there's someone turning right there left to go the other way, they're not, hap not happening. <laughs> so, gotta really wait that there. It's not a great, uh, route, I guess, to get to this um, drop. Got two guys under the overpass right here. I wonder if they are also going to Sage Robinson. Uh, I don't know. But I know that it opens up to the right up here. I think they're just parked there. Right before the entrance, it opens up the right. That's where I kind of hung out last time. So that's where we will try to hang out right now. I did lock the trailer, because sometimes, uh, what's that in a road? Is that just a, no, it's nothing. I thought that was something in a road, it's just a filled in pothole. Yeah, I just got uh, some good, good product back there. Same thing, I locked that trailer going to Daytona uh, with the, um, you should always lock your trailer, especially if you're 
uh, sleeping overnight somewhere. I don't know. But, uh, no, not this one. It opens up up here. Oh, well, that's actually a community. Do, 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 do. There's the blue. I can see it through the trees for C.H. Robinson. Let's get some shut eye and pray for a good morning tomorrow. Pray that they're in good spirits and that there's not too many trucks. Because last time I couldn't get into my uh, door until the other guy pulled out because it's real tight here. Oh no, we got some buddies. <laughs> well, luckily we have a space for us, but we got one, two, three, four, five trucks. We will pull in behind this one. Okay. train just started going by we parked right here about a truck length in front of the truck behind us in case he has to leave earlier than us tomorrow we're gonna shut this down let the oil cool down and uh get going tomorrow guys we'll see you in the morning ch robinson good night out here but hey they're doing their job they keep going back and forth See the big red tape. My bad. Yeah. It's all right. We're good. Thank We're you. in now. <laughs> Got lunch. <laughs> it's busy down there, though. You guys. Yeah, they 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 slam back. Today. You don't mess around. That side too. Please don't stick your head in the window. Oh man, they do that a lot. <laughs> like, hey man, the breath smells. <laughs> I just had somebody do that. Like you came right to the right. I can hear you. <laughs> don't know if you could hear that combo, but uh, just played dumb. I've been here twice and just said, oh, I've never been here. She said, you can buy me lunch. I said, okay, if that gets me out of here two hours early, it might get me a little back to my family. Sure. She was just, they're joking. I know they're joking, but it's still like, um, and there's a big sign up there. It says, don't be here 15 minutes early. But the last time I was here, I was in that line. Like there's four trucks on the, on the road waiting to get in for like 45 minutes. So it's kind of, eh. But I get it, but then C.H. Robinson, I think it's their bad with the design of this place and something. But we got door 31, which is a blessing because I just looked, I could see it. There's two doors to the left that are open, so I won't have to hit anybody's nose, hopefully, if no one's getting into 32 right now, <laughs> uh, to get this big girl in here because there's not a lot of room for where we're at. So I'm going to pull in. I'm actually going to back down from here because there's not a lot. You can't even turn the truck around. So C.H. Robinson is packed. They got trailers in front of trailers. Parts, so like this old yard jockey can't even get in here. He's gonna make it though. Whew. And I'm gonna try and get my nose over there and start backing up before he unhooks because last time the, the yard jockey driver here was a was an ex NASCAR racer. <laughs> it's going. That's like oh man. And then I got a Peterbilt. It's kind of I don't know if he's waiting to. Um, let me let this guy go. There's a beautiful sun up there. 
Uh, Peterbilt kind of coming up behind my rear. I don't know if he's coming out or if he's backing in too. I need this little bit of real estate to get my trailer clear. Then I can start backing up. Somebody's put their truck in the uh, grass over there. Let's see what Peterbilt's doing once I can see him. I uh, can't see him yet. Let me get my trailer over. Oh, he's going out. Okay, cool. I just saw him peek behind me. He's leaving. Super ego. Super ego. Let go of my ego. Cool. So I don't see any other trucks backing in anywhere. So prayers that 31 is still open without a 32 next to it. Hazards on so people know I'm moving. And I'm going to try and get my trailer as close to the truck side. Right now I'm towards those double stack trailer side. But for me to have the angle to get my nose and my truck to come around and, and make my trailer straight again, um, I'm going to have to be having my trailer over to the closest to the trucks that are already there. If that makes sense. I mean to the left. Okay, let's get back to 31. Jump out real quick and open our doors. Yes, we got lucky because if we were like 33, we still could have probably made it because we had a bunch of room, but 31 will be uh, a blessing. Okay, doors are open. Doors are open. Look at that Volvo right there. You see the cat on the dash? <laughs> thought it was like a stuffed animal. Oh, it's just a cat, orange cat just uh, chilling out there. Cool, cool. Trailer's sliding over now. Get it right past his nose. And make that hard cut. You don't want to cut too soon because the trailer will come too far over. But you do want to cut it. So Let's see if we can get this to happen. Door so I can see. And we're on the right track. Now I just start cutting it so our trailer doesn't come back too far. There we go. In there, and that is our buddy that we uh, saw yesterday over at the vitamin place. He probably has the 12 o'clock appointment, unless there was another one on the board. But the other, there was two appointments. One was 11, one was noon. So. Maybe he got checked in early also, which would be awesome. That would be real cool for him. Let's go check out a door one. Let's go turn our paperwork in and see if we're paying $30 for lunch. Hopefully not. I am telling you, C.H. Robinson, <laughs> you made a little too tight in here for all these trucks. My goodness. Just we're blessed and grateful. The last time we had to wait because we couldn't get past the truck's nose. Oh, he got in the door already. Awesome. We're already getting unloaded, so this could be a way better situation than last time. But um, it's just they, they, there's trailers in front of trailers. That, I mean, I know they needed room probably for the empties, but um, it would be a lot better if there wasn't trailers in front of trailers. You'd have a lot more room to maneuver. All good. How you doing, man? Hopefully we're done. It'll be cool. Just redoing my airline. You good to go. Good to go. Thanks a lot, man. I did send a couple prayers up to God before we started this uh, ordeal here because last time was a little bit rougher, but it's earlier in the day now. Last appointment was like three or four. I was worried about lunch because my appointment's 11. It's 9.50 right now and we're done. So thank you, God. Let's uh, get on the load board and try to get something going back towards the house. That's what I'm talking about with that room. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do or he's trying to turn around, but he's got nowhere to put the trailer. He's just probably backing out of it. I don't know. Only thing is he's about to hit the front of that truck right next to him. I don't know what he's trying to do, but he's not gonna be able to turn around. I think he's trying to back into this door or this spot, but he's, he was about a foot off the nose of that guy's truck. So I'm gonna try and help him get a, a bearing on this outside. He should be good. No, don't turn that way. Why are you turning that way? He wants to turn the other way so the trailer comes this way. I don't know what he's doing. All right, maybe he's just trying to get out of here. Because he's empty. All right. Look at the back of that trailer. That's some hitch right there. For it to be bent that bad, man, that is some pounding of the door. Woo! All right, we got him a little bit. Now he's straight. Okay. Uh -huh. Gonna probably back out of here. What is he gonna do? Woo. Okay. Let's 
Get in there and get our paperwork. No, I'm way back there. I know, but you're empty, right? Just back all the way out. Back all the way straight out, then turn it out. That's what I would do. Put your hazards on and back straight out. Oh, you gotta drop the trailer. You could make it, but when you came in there, you've gotta turn way that way so your trailer comes back this way. Yeah, because I saw you, I was like, is he leaving? Because he's empty, but you're dropping the trailer. Okay. Now, once he leaves, you'll be able to come even further this way and then really swing back that way. But before you lose all your room, you've got to come back that way. And then that'll drag the trailer over here. Good luck, brother. No worries. Awesome. They didn't even side nothing. Whew. That was way different than last time, guys. I am grateful and blessed. Thank you, God. Whew. Okay. And I hope that guy, uh, if he's not in the, the hole right now, we'll, we'll help him again. But he, uh, I don't know if he's new, but he'll get it figured out. It's just a little tight. Okay, so he went for a different hole. He went for the two trailer opening, which is probably a better choice for him. Now he's got the room. All right, buddy. We'll stay here for a second, make sure he doesn't hit this Swifty, and then we'll be on our way. The poor back of that trailer, guys. My goodness. That thing has taken some hits. Woo! All right, he's got a good angle to be down the middle, but he wants to choose a side. So he'll keep that angle, start cutting his trailer, his truck to the other side, and that'll bring the trailer straight. But it's all about the timing of when you start to come over, it'll make your trailer straighten up. But he's gonna be kind of in the middle, so he'll just readjust a little bit. There you go, bring the nose back around. All right, he's got it. Good job, CFI. Let's get out of here. Before our truck gets hit. Just walking by, I noticed this. That's uh, no good, guys, for whoever picks up this trailer. That thing's jammed in there. Uh, that's what happened to me last uh, year at Matt's. So what happened there, well, the trailer's also been like hit to the side, but somebody probably swung, swung around the back of the trailer, hit it. My whole thing got ripped off at Matt's two years ago, or was it last year? I think it was two years ago. First year I went there was not cool. So <laughs> thank you so much to the guys that I met at Matt's and they uh, watched the channel and they um, suggested a repair guy. He came out and repaired it before the show was over and we were able to get that poor mud flap seen better days too. We were able to get um, back on the road, back home, me and T-Dubs. It's awesome. Got some chicken broth or something? I don't know. Biscuit mix. Okay. Let's get out of here, Dub9. The hoods are a dime breed. There's not one other hood here. If you don't know what a hood is, it's one of these trucks that has like the squared off looking nose. Called a hood truck. I didn't know what that meant either until I got in the truck a little bit more. Okay, well we got a traffic jam. Well, it's kind of a hood. It's an FLD. There you go. Uh, we'll wait till he goes out of here. Okay, we'll just hang out right here. Pulled over for a second. Truck Smarter does have this one from Paramount going to, uh, but I've never heard of them and they don't have a bid option or anything. So I'm just going to call them and see what, uh, ordered for training and quality assurance. So what happens? Tell how long we're Thank you for old. calling R&L Global Logistics. Oh, it's R&L. We're happy you called and we're ready to help. Our menu has recently changed, so mm -hmm. please listen carefully. Okay. If you know your party's eight-digit extension, you can dial it at any time. Are you a driver or dispatcher? If so, please press one. Uh, if you're an established customer, we'll push one. If we're a driver. Our Global is here to help drivers and dispatchers. Let's see what we can do to help you. Okay. Are you calling to search for available freight or in response to a posting? Yeah. Please press one. We'll do that. Do, 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 do. Here comes the music. Hello? Hello? Hey, I have a load number uh, off a load board if I can give that to you. Sure. 18864 or 6848. Sorry. Uh, 
it's Georgia to South Carolina, but the load is already covered. So okay. All right. Thank sorry. you so thank you so much. Thank you. Well, the search continues. That was awesome, though, to have them uh, answer so quickly. And uh, it sucks it's covered, but I'm not even set up with them until I have to fill the carrier packet out, which isn't that bad. But we'll keep looking. Well, oh my goodness, guys. Atlanta is the king of underbidding. Um, two CH Robinson loads. A bunch of other loads. There was an AMX one earlier. Um, two stops. One was in Greenville. One was in Gaffney for tomorrow morning. It went for 600 I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, Kirsch has one. Um, picking up in Alabama. About 100 miles of deadhead, but going over to Jefferson and Gainesville. Two stop. Um, but no response from them. So the C.H. Robinsons were on the board. Uh, the Mills River is a Pepsi one. It's picking up a Gatorade. It's heavy going up towards Asheville. So you would have to hit that grade heavy. So I said, hey, I'd be about 950. And uh, he came back and said, <clears throat> I'm trying to get 800 out of it. And I said, I'll do 900. And then someone booked it at $630. Like nothing on the app. Didn't even negotiate. Didn't call. <laughs> did nothing. Insane. I was like, oh my goodness. He's like, yeah, these people are are just leaving money on the table. They, they would take 800 right now, and he just left $170 on, on the board uh, going up to, in the mountains with a 45,000-pound load. Okay, I said, all right. And there's another one. Um, it was a straight through. I had I, I had time to be there within the uh, 11 a.m. Um, open window to pick up. I said, I'm, I'm like 15 miles away. I can go get it. Talking to him about that, uh, I said, I think I said 850 or something like that. He said, man, we can, he's holding it um 650 or six yeah 650 i said we'll try to do 800 he said i, I can get it approved at a uh, 700 it's like cool let's, let's just go for that we'll go for it straight through to kind of augusta area takes me out of atlanta i said all right he said cool got it approved i just need to get in the load which what that means is that someone else is in the load which means they have it locked for like 30 minutes and if they have somebody um they're trying to book it with and he's like yeah well if, once they get out of it we'll get it and that person booked it for 650 so <laughs> I was like, man, everyone's just undercutting everybody else. No worries, but there's nothing else popping up. Um, think about Atlanta. You want to get out of here. I'm um, right before the 285 goes to Fulton County or goes to uh, back towards my house. So you definitely don't want to go around Fulton County, go all the way up to the like, Chattanooga side, towards going towards Chattanooga at 75, and then back around. No, I would just want to go this way, past the airport again, get out of Atlanta as soon as I can. Maybe go get the truck washed, uh, look for loads once I get out of Atlanta, but I'm staying in this area because there's a lot of freight. Fairburn, Union City, where I just delivered. McDonough is right over here. Uh, Newman, Noonan is right over here. Lots of like, water loads and stuff, but um, nothing worthwhile. And people are just, I mean, I, I can't believe somebody booked it online. I would just hit the, hit the go book button on, uh, on the app for $630. And they were like, they probably would have took $850, $900 um, if I, if I would have waited longer. So know your worth guys stick to your guns but atlanta please do better my goodness i'm getting out of here even at about noon you still get a little traffic but not as bad as uh three four o'clock 233 four o'clock <laughs> so like a little merge here we got some slow and go up here i don't know what we got oh this is the 20 okay this goes out towards augusta or out towards birmingham the other direction but Got some uh, merging going on. Probably could get over the next lane over because I am going straight through. I'm not going on 20. There's a big gap and there's some graffiti on the SMX or Dodge Iowa. Come on over, whatever P means on your truck. Here we go. Okay, let's get out of Atlanta. 55 degrees. We're flowing pretty good, but then we saw some oranges and blueberries looks like we got not bad damage to any of the cars i don't know what happened maybe some side scrapes maybe a little uh, rubbing is racing i don't know but there's my beautiful 85 that says greenville let's get the heck out of here uh going into our atlanta on the other side oh my goodness oh dead stop Woo. all those trucks guys t's and p's just a bad, uh, they're trying to infrastructure, widen the roads, make better overpasses. Just so many people, uh, not enough roads, not enough time. So T's and P's for good old uh, 85 going into Atlanta. We are going out. <laughs> I would rather not make money in deadhead half the day or, or an hour. I'm only at two and a half hours from where I was sitting. I'm only like an hour and 45 now from my house. So it's not a far ride. 
I might stop at the lake again because I really wanted to have power on to play with the Trans Am, but we'll see if I get a load somewhere, Anderson area where my lake property is, uh, or out here even. I'll stop up here and just once I get out of Atlanta altogether when I'm on the two lane, then I'll stop and just see if there's anything right here. Jefferson, Georgia, Brazelton, that kind of stuff. And uh, if there is, then I'll wait here. But if not, I might just go to the lake. And because uh, the power's back on, because I pulled my cameras up and I tried. We yeah, we can control the lights in the house, the door lock, the cameras, uh, the air conditioning, heating, that kind of stuff. When that stuff doesn't work, you don't have any power. <laughs> so cameras were up again this morning. I was like, cool. So we got power. That's awesome. I hope it didn't last too long. Didn't get too cold last night, but it was in the 40s. So. There's a bull bull taken out. Yeah, let's keep going. Let's get out of this last kind of mumbo jumbo mingle of lanes and we will be uh, smooth sailing, hopefully. Okay, no idea what the CRV is doing, but he just jolted in front of me. And now he's jolting back over. What are you doing? Like I was cruising on this land, he just jumped in front of me just like he just did right there. Or she did. I don't know if they know where they're going. Thanks for ruining my momentum. There you go. Are you going to go over there? Okay. Bad awareness. Bad awareness. I was cruising too. Nope. Slamming on the brakes for no reason. Just because you wanted to get over two lanes and then go back to that lane? Uh-huh. Okay. Just an elderly lady living in her own world. Some people should not have a license. It's okay though. Let's get home. We're still safe. There is Peach State Freight Lighter. That is actually where I got my, um, oh, I was a little kid down there with his, I think it was his mom or his dad, just hanging out behind a truck. Prayers that it's a, a quick fix or whatever they got they're waiting on, or maybe they're a mechanic there, I don't know. Uh, that's where I got my batteries. They a nice little showroom there, and my, I thought it was, was it my batteries in this truck? I think it was my batteries in this truck, because so a lot of times, guys, you think it's your batteries and it's your starter. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think it was my batteries in this one, but maybe it was a combination of both. And then I did do a new starter on this truck, but let's see what we got going on. Okay, they got a stop sign. All right. I thought they were coming straight through. But I'm going to hit this little so okay. Look at loads for right around here. And uh, see what happens on Thursday. I'm trying to set, I was trying to, oh, that truck got a fire. I'm trying to set myself up so that I would be in, um, at home for Friday. Get another Friday load. You know, it's in a perfect world. I like to be home on Friday or around the house somewhere. I was looking at the loads right now. All those loads I was looking at were going by the house. Um, I'm gonna wave this guy on because I don't think I'm gonna make that turn with him right there. I probably could, but like not easily. So we'll wait for him and wait for this other car. But anyways, yeah, I like to be home so I can get something on a truck and then um, sit there for the weekend, deliver, take off Sunday and deliver like I did last week, go to Daytona. We'll see. You go ahead, man. What are you doing there, black truck? I'm just gonna go right. Okay. Uh, figure this out. I had to wait there for quite a while, but we got through it. I don't know what those two cars are doing. Those cars just turned in, but now they're way down there having a little powwow meeting, maybe a little lunch break special. Who knows? Um, a little something going on. But yeah, let's hang out here. Got a wide open fuel on. I'll probably back into a spot over there or pull forward. Oh, the pump's broken. Even better. Pump's broke, so we can just park right here. I'll just, I'm still going to pull up. But, um, yeah. And I was going to wash the truck. I was going to go exit 160, but it's supposed to rain. 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Only tomorrow. But we'll get this truck painted, or not painted, cleaned eventually. But I got some decisions to make. Back to the lake, back home. It's one o'clock now in the afternoon. Let's look for something right here, but my, my hopes are not high. Good little refresh. Uh, that was some huge chicken tenders. It was, it was uh, lots of chicken. They were overflowing, you could say. Um, nothing really happened. There's one load that um, was up earlier for 500, now it's 645. Uh, way up on Highway 40 and it doesn't drop till 10 a.m. That'd be a bad uh, spot for getting a load on Friday, especially depending on how long they got un un unloading you. If that was like 800, 850 maybe, but um, I'd rather just be home and find something for Friday. So we're gonna keep rolling that way, but we'll, we'll be heading towards that weather. It's first quality, and it, it's not a hard cut off at four o'clock at first quality. They're um, 24 seven, so we'll see if something else pops up with the exchange, 
extend that uh, window or something better even pops up, but it's not looking good for Thursday. I don't know. Just had this uh, officer DPS go past us. Um, looks like he must have broke down. On to Amazon. I don't see any. A little bit of wear and tear on the side, and uh, no, he's, he's not. Oh, missed the gear. <laughs> he's not uh, hitting the front or anything. Just kind of stopped in the left lane. That's not cool. Tea in peace. He's checking his book work or something on it, and uh, yeah, he's a piece for that one. That is a lot of trucks lined up in one row. <laughs> we have the way station right here, but everyone just started started going again from that uh, truck that was stalled out there in the left lane. So the southbound side looks like it's closed for business. I don't know about the northbound. We shall see. Lots of trucks. They're just bypassing everybody. It's just constantly on. I would probably imagine that's smart because there's so many trucks. A constant line behind me too. All right, there's another reason you don't go to Atlanta. <laughs> it's hard to get home. Back in the beautiful South Carolina. Should always be in the left lane coming through here or try to dodge these. Let's try to stay close to the guardrail. There we go. Dodge them. There's Lake Hartwell again. And we're back in our home state. So there's a Costco truck. Pretty nice welcome set up there. Um, used to be able to walk all on the shore. But now you can uh, kind of hug the shoreline. Still get some fishing in. Do whatever you want. But yeah, let's get on home, guys. Um, there was that one first quality load going to Morganton up off Highway 40, uh, about 130 miles. They can come up a lot more from 6, uh, was it 645 they have it at, so 645 would be maybe to Charlotte, or that's even kind of weak. There's some nice bikes in that trailer. Bike Week in Daytona this week, I heard they're kind of handing out tickets for uh, noise, even if you rev your bike. It's making it no fun, it's not even worth going. Uh, not that you want to just rev your bike all night, but if you want to have a little rev, a little rev, a little burnout, that's kind of fun, kind of cool about motorcycles, but I guess they want that to stop, so it takes, it takes a little bit of fun out of it, but you can still enjoy some good people down there. Have some good times, but we're back in South Carolina, that's a good time for me. Way station was open, but they are doing some paperwork check or something for that guy. Only one trooper there, but it was open, it said truck bypass, okay. All right, almost back to the lake. Lake property is right to our left. That's awesome. But uh, I don't think I'm going to stop there. I don't, I'll rather get home and see the boys, see the family. I don't like being at the lake. It really, I'm, I'm like, not bored, but I'm lonely without the kids there. <laughs> without my boys there at T Dubs. Uh, without I got those cool lights on the dock. It really makes it nice at nighttime. Uh, even though there's no mosquitoes right now, which I love, they will be coming during the summer, during the uh, end of spring. But hey. Grateful to get those out there. Uh, glad the power's back on. Just rambling on, but you know we got about 40 miles left, and we'll be back home. And I forgot to show you guys earlier, but these are the reviews for one of those, uh, the one that I wanted more. The one going to not, not the Hope, was it the Hope Mills one, not the Gatorade one, the other one. Anyways, this is the reviews on the facility. Sure, the latest one was pretty decent, but uh, the uh, majority of them are pretty bad. So, and then for people just to undercut, and I don't know if it's a problem with the new workforce coming into play, new drivers out here that are uh, taking these loads, or if it's old, old veteran drivers, or maybe just new drivers that got into the CDL um, coming out here and bid these loads as bad, or just taking them without even asking for them, or just leaving two hundred dollars on the board. Like more than your fuel money, it's just leaving it out there. Book it now, take it. And it was up on the board for a while. It's not like they it just popped up and they had to book it real quick to get some. Uh, sure, I didn't get anything today, but I could have. I could have taken another little cheapo load here or there. But I'd rather waste the sixty dollars in fuel, get back to my house and get back to my market, and hopefully get something for the uh, some people that got pulled over or doing something with their boater. Uh, 
I get something bad forwarded tomorrow, but the market's pretty bad this week. It hasn't been a, there's no movement in it. They're not really negotiating with you. So we'll wait till they have to push them off and get these customers. It's not really the broker's fault if they have an, uh, a bid they gave the customer for what they can move it for and then they can't move it for that. It'll go back to the customer and the customer might look for a new broker to work with or somebody else will offer them something else. But the more and more you know your ground, you stick your ground, stick your guns and know your worth, those customers will come up in the rates because inflation is not going down anytime soon. Cost of living is not going down anytime soon. Uh, but we're the only ones that are getting paid less. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's other industries also. A lot of people are getting paid less, but it's crazy how the trucking industry took a step backwards when everything in the world went up. I don't, I don't get that. So that really, we set the rates. Is that what I'm trying to get at? The, the independent owner operators, the small truck companies, the one, one truck operations like myself. If you don't take the loads, the customer will have to pay more. Not just a simple supply and demand fact. So I hope that can get to the right people and hopefully that gets to the people of Atlanta so they don't take loads and leave 200 bucks on the floor on the table. This guy's probably loaded so I'm gonna get in front of him so he can come and get behind me and not block traffic. I just keep it keep it cool though. Keep it cool in that throttle, don't waste the fuel. But I'm gonna go back and see my family. That's what means the most to me in this world. So I'm not gonna take loads for nothing just to move my truck. I'd rather move my truck where I want it to be, set me up for tomorrow. But I'm grateful and glad that I got that load there. And I'm grateful and glad it was off the truck so quickly. Stop back there, um, exit 21. Can kind I of check over things, but nothing happened. And there was two loads that were they're picking up within the next two hours. Um, but they're not budging on to put in a price at all. Well, one of them, they're not the one that's going to Morganton. The other one, I'd have to go way up there to that Salem uh, water plant. It's kind of a crazy road to get to, but it's not bad. And go back towards Atlanta to Sewanee. Uh, it's 745, $745 on 100 miles. That's not bad, but uh, I don't know if I would have made the pickup. But this car in front of me, he was went flying by me, but he's got a bunch of smoke coming off the bottom. It's got a, a leak, or maybe they did an oil change. I don't know. It'll spill some oil on the uh, manifold, the exhaust. Either way. And then there was a, two more that popped up that I emailed my buddy on, my C.H. Robinson buddy, going right back to where I just was. This guy is drifting. Maybe he's looking at his gauges. I don't know. Um, we're going to try and get around him after this hill right here. We got a new, uh oh, he's slowing down again. Got a pneumatic getting pulled over over there. Oh, hazard's on you. Yeah, he's got some engine problems, man. You're, you are uh, smoking pretty bad. You might want to get off and see if you have a bird's nest. That car hasn't been ridden, driven in a while. Uh, but anyways, yeah, those two CH ones go right back to where uh, I just was. I'm going to back off a little more here. It's kind of ruining my momentum, but there's a bunch of, there's a parking lot coming on my left. There's a bunch of cars coming on my left. Um, I still want this thing to burst into flames right in front of me. It's got the Hyundai, I think it is. Got some something going on there. You're smoking. All right, let's get on past. It's got an older, older gentleman driving it. Maybe he just doesn't uh, know what's going on. I don't know. Either way, those seats, Robinson ones. I said, hey, what do we got on these? Um, I really don't want to go back to Atlanta, but let's try for like a 1100 or 1050. And he said, all right, I'll look at them. And they <laughs> one book for 700 and one book for 850. I was like, man, I mean, 851. That's decent to go to Atlanta, I guess. If, if you're coming out of here, you just took a load over here and you want to go back. That's not too bad. 700, yeah. I just took 800 from an Anderson to there, so I don't know. Anyways, I'm just rambling. Jeez and piece of that Hyundai and the pneumatic trailer. And we're almost home. I wish I wouldn't have wasted the fuel, but I, my time with my family means more than anything in the world. So I'd rather be home with T-Dubs and uh, the boys and set up for Friday. Like I said, oh, built another hotel over there. Like I said, for uh, going down to Florida or maybe somewhere different, maybe up to Tennessee. I don't know, but you know me, I love the Florida run. I love that 500 500 miles for almost two thousand dollars. I'll do that all day. But yeah, so for a better week and maybe a better Friday for freight also. It's been pretty bad. Okay, Greenville, South Carolina. Here I come. That oil has cooled down, and that's a wrap for Thursday. Really wish I could have got something that would have made sense, would have uh, brought us back here, but people are bidding uh, quickly and lowly. So 
Let's see what tomorrow holds. I was looking a little bit when I was stopped today at 21, but there wasn't much for tomorrow either. The same usual uh, solar panel loads for 850. The same Arcadia um, from Duncan uh, for $1,400, which is not good. Not good, not good. So let's get home to what makes us the most happy in this world, and that is T-Dubs and the boys. Home sweet home. Got some, like, sun rays up in the clouds. Let a little bit of sun come through. I like it. Well, hello. How was school today? Good. So I have something for you. What is it? You get first pick. Huh? You you? Well, how did you hear me? Tiki, can you grab Tiki for me? Or is he going to continue to bark? He's going to continue to bark. Where is your youngest brother? Uh, Upstairs. How did you get that shirt? Because Colin was wearing that. that shirt. There's two of them. There's two of them? Okay. Yeah. All right, Cash, I have a special meeting. Honestly. Awesome. Whoa. Whoa. What do you want? Where'd what you come you from? Um, also, Uncle Robbie donated $50 to each one of your... Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Uncle Robbie. Yeah, if you're a part of Just Truckin' Family on uh, Facebook, the link is there. Uh, if you want to donate... Thanks. New playground equipment. And thank you, everyone, who's been... Some Cash, everyone that's been subscribing to your channel, do you know how many subscribers you need to go live? Eighteen. Are you serious? Yes, thank you guys. Dude. We've got you've gotten over hundred subscribers in like two days. So thanks guys. It's KCK plays right here on the right. But I'm gonna have a secret meeting with Cash because Cash doesn't ever get it. Okay, to now that we're in the secret office, you get to choose one of these. <laughs> I know it would be in there. Like this. Uh-huh. Or this. <laughs> or these ones are orange crust little candies. Or these ones. They're sour and sweet ones. Mmm. So you chose the gummy one with the sweet tart top? No. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't like it. He, he, can, he can change. Okay. Good choice. Give cash first gift because these two are crazy and they will just grab everything. Is it my turn? Yes. Tiki. I like this one. You sure? Okay. Kai, where's Casey? There's two. Kai, Kai, Tiki's. <laughs> Tiki, there's two more in my or uh, Kylan, whatever your name is. Kylan, there's two more in my pocket. Can I look? Can I even get them? Those are like the soda cans. But they're. But well, they're bigger. I saw this. No, no, they're jelly beans. Are they jelly beans? Purple jelly beans. Which one do you want, Kai? No, yeah, to I choose. Want both. No, choose one. The other one goes to Lily. Hmm. So you want to give Lily? Which one do you want? Or do you want to? Can you open this? No, that one's for Lily? Yeah. All right. Yes, we'll open it. You're welcome. Oh, it comes out of his ears when you squish him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Lily. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Is yours good, Kai? Yours looks like a brain. Oh, my goodness. Found these candies at good old Circle K. All right, guys. Look at that little cheeser in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> School pictures came. First things first, just got home, told the neighborhood kid, go ahead and uh, bring your bike over. I'll try and fix it for you because they were all riding to the park or the small park. Anyways, small park, yeah. uh, exhibit A, he pulled so hard that he broke the, the little tab piece. that holds the spring that like recoils it. And he also broke out like these two little things pop out that um, lock into the mechanism. Anyways, you have no idea what I'm talking about. He broke one of those off too. <laughs> so he pulls so hard that he uh, thinks it's like a, a competition to start his bike, but... Anyways, bike is down again. I will buy a new pull string mechanism and get our uh, buddies Braylon's uh, bike running again. Yes. But good to see you. I uh, miss it's you. Thursday night, I miss you too. I wish I had a load. Okay. Had a couple, but people were underbidding me. That's a, the um, concept of today's video is uh, just underbidding other people. But yeah, let's go say goodbye to these kids. And I think Tito's and I might hit the hot tub tonight. But I tried, tried to fix it. Thought it was just a pull cord. No, he broke all kinds of stuff in there. But on that note, guys, we got a little fire going. Braylon, we will get your bike fixed, okay? Sir. All right. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you on the next one. On the next one.